So today we're going to look at a new trend, old money. You've probably heard of it online, you've seen it probably as a hashtag. What does it mean? Does it really mean anything? Is it just to dress up how you should dress less last week? Does it have a new name? What do you think? Yeah, I think that if you've had your finger on the pulse of the menswear industry or fashion, you know, generally as of late, you've definitely come across the hashtag on Instagram, you know, old money aesthetic or old money style. The old money aesthetic that we're seeing play out on Instagram right now is a very sort of New England East Coast aesthetic. Um, okay. Tends to be prepp preppier. You see a lot of it, you know, I think coming from the Ivy Leagues. And it's, it sort of conjures up images of people vacationing, you know, to coastal towns like the Hamptons and, you know, spending time so sailing on their boats. So a very popular reference that's been in fashion for decades. I mean, we were talking about that you know, a long time ago. We were yeah. talking about things like JFK. Uh, There's nothing new about this. Okay, but, but we've cut, so is there a different nuance of old money? I, I do see it and I see influencers saying how to dress old money and then they're just, going head to toe in brand new clothes. Whereas from a British aesthetic, yeah. we often talk about old money, old classic style, bushish style. And the essence of that is old clothes, frayed collars. Well, you have to remember that, I mean, here, I mean, the UK is much older than the States, right? So there's a bit of a distinction there. And even, you know, when it comes to heritage and how you wear clothes and, you know, how you treat your clothing, it's very different than in the States. Uh, what we're seeing play out on Instagram right now with this trend is I think a lot of younger people um, referencing specifically the 2000s and 2010 era, but really, I mean, this way of dressing predates that pretty significantly. So this is a hashtag old money look. Um, it's your classic stripe Oxford cloth button down shirt. I've intentionally left the collar buttons undone. Um, it has not been ironed. It has a wrinkled lived in look. We have a classic blue blazer and then a cashmere jumper draped over the shoulders. I mean, this is preppy. It's also, you know, hashtag old money aesthetic. This is something that you would see a rich person, you know, New York City walking around the streets wearing, but also you could see somebody so How would on you their... know they were, but if I saw somebody wearing see, this that... outfit, would you, would you know instantly, is this guy trying to dress old money or is he really old money? You know, I think what sort of tips it over the edge there for me, honestly, is the sweater over the shoulders. Like Not, that, not, not the £20,000 watch. You know, well, that ironically is probably, of, of course, this would be the most expensive thing probably he's wearing, but there's really nothing here that is super expensive. You so know, it's a very marketable concept. Yeah, it's very marketable. It's very sort of aspirational. And I mean, I see this, you know, you have sandy beaches in the Hamptons. You, you know, you're on the sea, you... Maybe you're going to go out on your boat or go to the Yacht yeah. Club later. I mean, this is very much within that world. It, to me, it's, it, there's a nostalgia there. I mean, again, since I've been a menswear designer, you always look backwards. You always been inspired sure. by different periods. And the periods you always go back to, from a British point of view, would be Bright Head Revisited. In the same way you have your Ivy League, we look to the Oxford Colleges. Yep. And the idea of being undergraduate in the tweed jackets and the uh, the baggy grey flannels and the suede shoes, there's always that element to it. Um, and then the other things like the colonial era, which gets romanticised into this fantastic thing from Hollywood films, things like Out of Africa. So, and then things like Chariots of Fire, again, romanticising the past. So we've always been looking backwards. Yeah. Um, well, that's the nature fact, of fashion generally. Yeah. I mean, it's about a 40-year cycle and... But I think pretty much since the post-war period from the 50s, English fashion, certainly men's fashion, has yeah. always been looking backwards. Yep. Some of the core clothing items to achieve this American hashtag old money aesthetic look, um, I think are really sort of rooted from the bottom and working their way up. So, trousers. Definitely um, trousers. Trousers. You see a lot of very vibrant, colorful trousers, like the salmon pink trouser. Um, I personally think that's too strong. Um, you'll see a lot of guys wearing the salmon pink trousers, maybe a braided belt or something, and another colorful polo. That's just way too much. Personally, I think it's better to keep the trousers a little bit more neutral and then play with other elements. Okay. So a very American hashtag old money sag trouser would be a stone wash chino. And I'm not talking about like the army sort of beige chinos, but like the lighter, um, just darker than eggshell chino, if okay. that makes sense with some drape and with a pleat or two even, I think that very much leans into this look. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about shoes, uh, boat shoes, I mean, Sperry's specifically, yeah. 
or you know of that style are very much you know old money aesthetic uh, Hampton esque. You know, working your way I'm up. I'm guessing loafers yeah. as well. I mean, Loafer, of course, loafers. I mean, yeah, a beautiful. I mean, tassel loafer, a full strap. You know, penny loafer. You see a lot of. I don't know the exact term, but well, you see a lot of braided belts. But then you see a lot of belts that sort of have designs woven into them. Would that yeah. just be a, a woven belt? Is that you how you often you would... get? Those, you see those in the uh, like the polo belts, like the Argentinian polo belt. That type yeah. of thing. Or you get the braided belts, or you yeah. get the military style elastic belts. And you often get like. For the more sportier looks, you often see that sort of belt. And that, that, there is obviously a crossover here between British and American fashion, and yeah. there's a huge Italian and French influence into this as well. And they're so Spanish. I think you're, you're, you're I mean, definitely, that's men's work for you, yeah, really, right? Because again, a lot of the a lot of things you're mentioning, a lot of the elements you're mentioning, yeah. came from Europe, yeah. and then got refined and changed and made more comfortable. Tell because me. you always leave that something very important. And obviously, no socks. No socks, of course. No <laughs> socks, right? But, you know, I do see sometimes like really sort of loosely woven, chunky socks that are, you know, More sort of... the winter, I hope. Yeah, like sort of falling around, you know, the ankle, like they're not pulled up tight. Sort of I like, mean, the, it's, like the crew sock. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah nice. again, sort of very haphazard Ar Argyles look. and stripes yeah. and that type of thing. But then, you know, working our way up, shirts. Um, it's going to be a long sleeve uh, Oxford cloth button down shirt. Um, usually well worn, lived in well. I mean, it's got some signs of aging. You know, that's the thing with this look. I think is I mean, that's you don't want it to look like very polished. That's that reminds me very much of London style. When I was, yeah. doing, when I was a salesman on German Street in my early twenties, and you see these very expensively dressed gentlemen with frayed shirt collars. Yeah, and I'd be thinking, well, you know, his suit was on Savile Row. He's wearing bespoke shoes. He's just been to an expensive lunch. Why can't he have a new shirt? And there's the idea of just having older shirts that are frayed yeah. is a look. And I think that also works across in America as well. In the London style of just having old frayed clothes, yeah. it's the old in the, in the old money. The blazer. I mean, this can take any form really in terms of fabric. I think just there's sort of a Again, like well lived in, a well worn look to it. I'm Blue is classic. I'm guessing it's the, it's the American. They're looking for the sack blazer, aren't you? They're looking yeah. for a button three, roll two, small yeah, edge hook. It's going to be off the shoulders yeah. a little bit. You're going to have some volume through the front quarters. Gold buttons, you know, potentially if you're going for that super sort of preppy yacht club look. And then a sweater or something just to drip over your shoulders. You never know when, you know, a cool ocean breeze might come through and you need an extra <laughs> layer, but otherwise it just sits on your shoulders but it is the extra just layer. to look good. It is the extra layer. It is the extra layer. It is the extra layer and it's a, it's a good look and we all do it. And if you're a stylist, you absolutely love it. Yeah. I guess the main point I would take from the British take, uh, British uh, idea of this is the advantage of having money when it comes to your wardrobe. The great thing about having money and funds is you can buy the best, you can buy better quality, but then you look after it. And I think that that creates an aesthetic in itself. And this is, I mean, a, a very clear distinction between American menswear and British menswear, or, or the views in those two areas towards menswear. I mean, exactly as you said, I mean, I've now been here for three and a half years, and people who have money tend to spend money on clothing. Even if you don't have money, actually, you value clothing. It's more of an investment, and you're going to wear that clothing for a long time, and you're going to care for it and look after it, and it's going to serve you well. And exactly like you just said, in the long run, you'll probably, hopefully, is it an idea, spend less money than if you buy something that's cheap or not well made and have to, you know, replace it every year, every couple months. There's also the advantage of inheriting clothing. Yeah. Again, when I worked as I was working with people and myself, I've inherited very little. Um, but as far as clothing goes, you, you'd have people when they go to an, a formal event, they'd be wearing their grandfather's morning coat, they're wearing their uncle's yeah. uh, dinner jacket. So to, the opportunity to, to get these fantastic pieces that do last a long time, because they're, they're designed to last. Clothing in Savile Row was built in such a way that you, it would be passed on to the next generation. That, is, that would be shown in the inlays and it'd be shown in the way the buttons were, were sometimes made on the cuff. So with the British look, there are significant amount of American and European influences, um, even though it's rooted in Savile Row, German Street and Northampton Shoes. Mm. Um, you'll see certainly Ralph Lauren mixed in there, you know, the button down, certainly part of the look. The polo shirt has been very much adopted by it, yep. uh, particularly by the polo crowds to wear the Ralph Lauren polo shirt. But other elements you'll see would be things like Gucci loafers fits into it and Hermes ties. So there are mixtures of it's European luxury brands 
tied in with that German street Savoir aesthetic which creates a certain look. Thank you for watching. Hope you found that informative. As always, please share your comments and don't forget to subscribe to get more of this tutorial gold.